Hello, everybody, and welcome in to the 141st episode of the Penny Bloom Podcast. His I, Colton Robertson, and I am joined today by Joseph George. What's up, homie? What is up? What's going on? Oh, nothing much. Just recorded quite the incredible episode. Mm. Uh, and you guys are about to uh, enjoy uh, a, a large chunk of that conversation. The full thing will be over at patreon.com slash Cobra Bloom, but because of the very nature of the conversation, it is only appropriate that I, I had to split it up and, and put some here and some over there. Mm-hmm. And uh, I really I really hope you enjoy today as it is, while it is all over the place, there's there's a thread there. There's a thread there that certainly links it. And, find the uh, common theme. Whatever it is, I don't know. You find it for me. Uh, there's a, a thread there, though. I promise. It's there. It's somewhere in there. Like, I'm probably just going to title this episode, like, Life and Stuff. <laughs> but, uh, I, I, I don't know. We shall, we shall see. But, um, yeah, I mean, what, what, some Sopranos talk? Plenty of Sopranos talk. Uh, philosophy, politics. Uh, we got, uh, we got, uh, uh Nihilism discussion. In there, even. What's that? Nihilism, I guess. Nihilism, uh, the, the, the nature, the nature of the billionaire. Uh, mm. A lot Uh, of interesting, just uh, save the earth, Uh, save the earth. A lot of uh, uh, environmentalism and, but uh, like, like, uh, like, like you'll find in this conversation, it's all about finding the finding that common ground and just having a discussion and uh, being civil about things. Uh, So uncivilized. Mm. I love, I love me some Obi-Wan Kenobi. Can never get enough Obi-Wan. Can never get enough Obi-Wan. But yeah, enjoy the episode. Uh, roll, roll the tape. Welcome to the Penny Bloom Podcast. Ain't another place that has got more bombast. Rump past your mom, dad's listening to Tomcats. Talking everything to make you sad. We don't want that. We're here to make you smile. Put your mind at ease. Peace, love, and bloom. And always praise Keanu Reeves. This is what we about. Get some weed and now. We'll talk until we can't no more. And then we peace and out. All right, let's go. Penny Bloom Podcast. It's the Penny Bloom Podcast. Penny Bloom Podcast. So uh, I think it's just going to be me and you today. What the fuck are we going to do? Yeah, uh, we can do anything. Freaking we can do anything. Movies, superheroes. If we want to do a draft or if we want to wait with uh, for more to, more people to join for a draft, I'm also down. We can... Frankly, I mean, like, I like I like having more people in the draft, but, like, I want to save, like, the like, the broadest possible ones probably for a bigger group. Like, mm-hmm. like movies, that would be a fun one with a lot of people just to provide a ton of movies. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That that one makes sense for a lot of people. Um, Because favorite movies, like, that's a, like, you can learn a lot about a person just by, exactly. like, knowing their top five favorite movies. Like, and I'm interested, like, whenever I really think about it, like, I really think. Like, of my top five favorite movies. Like, is a single Marvel movie in there? Maybe. Is a Star Wars movie in there? Probably. I, I, I See, and that's the thing, too. It, for, for the longest time, I had a really, really hard time committing a Marvel or Star Wars movie to my top five. Mm-hmm. Just because, like, it's like a whole separate thing for me. Like, I don't watch those movies the same way I watch other movies. And, I mean, like, obviously, they're still movies. So, like, it's it's a confusing conundrum that I have with myself. Hmm. But, like, I think about... It, it wasn't until, like, last year that I was like, you know what? I have to say Star Wars Return of the Jedi is a top five favorite movie for, for me. You know, like... Like, I was just, like, think I was putting together a top five list. And I think, like, funnily enough, I think it might have been when I was putting together a list for Emily whenever she asked me early on mm. in the relationship, what would be, what are your top five movies? And I was like, I was like, I was at four and I was struggling for a fifth. And I was like, man, my favorite movie isn't even on this. Why am I even holding off? Like, I'm mm. like, so I went ahead and throw, threw it on there. But, like, 
Marvel, Marvel, like objectively, like I don't, and it's 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 happening more and more with time, and the more stuff I watch, I enjoy the movies as movies less and less. Mm. You know, like, uh, and there are certain ones like I I enjoy the story and I enjoy the characters and stuff, but as a whole, I I enjoy other movies more. It's just mm-hmm. uh, the general the general way. It's of kind of like, like with Marvel, you have to experience the whole thing. You're going into a movie thinking of the whole universe, you know, as you watch it. So it's that's, like it's that's a whole. Why I enjoy yeah, it. It is not, it is just a whole different thing. Like you're not going in like thinking, okay, I am going to have this movie where it's a completely new universe, completely new characters. You know, every everything's completely new in this movie, and by the end of it, I'm gonna have you know some kick ass feeling. Uh, or I'm gonna cry, or I'm yeah, of some sort, you know, like that. That's what you go into a normal movie, like thinking. Yeah, but. exactly. Like, like I'm, I'm thinking, like from, I don't know, what was the last superhero movie I saw in theaters? I guess it would have been Shang Chi. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I really enjoyed Shang Chi. That like, was that, just a good movie. Too, no, see, and here's general. the thing: is that like they've gotten better. Mm. Yeah, yeah, like there are there are I'd say two and a half phases of Marvel that plainly aren't like the best <laughs> movies they're yeah. just fun like that's all like mm-hmm. and i mean and two and a half is like conservative it, it's probably more like three uh but you know their their big team up movies are good because of your prior information from the solo films mm-hmm. see like mm-hmm. end game end game in and of itself fun movie fantastic like Oh my goodness, this is awesome, but it is awesome because it is the culmination of 10 years of storytelling. Yeah, there're 24 movies or whatever that came before yeah. it. Like And that's that in and of itself is a whole other awesome thing. Like that doesn't that's like insane that, that there's more than 20 films that all culminated to a movie. I guess like two movies, but like still like the fact that they had this plan whether it was all along or not, you know, whether from Iron Man 1, they had Thanos. I don't know. Probably not. You know, they probably... I mean, at least Age of Ultron. But, like, they did They did have so many hints so early. Like, yeah. it, it, it's crazy. So, you know, we do give... I, I feel like I give Marvel a lot of credit, but, like, maybe they do deserve it. Because, like, this... It, like, they truly have created, like, a completely different category in movies. Like, it, exactly. they're completely on their own. This is this, and that's the thing that I've come to conclude about my Marvel fandom mm. is that, like, there will be movies I love, sure. I will not tell you that they are the best movie I've ever seen, though. What What's awesome about Marvel is the, is the grand scope of it and the way that they've done such a interconnected storyline for so many years. Whether that storyline is uh, simple at, at points. At several points, so be it. That's what it. Like, it's for children. Yeah, like children should be able to watch these movies. Yeah. So it's like, I enjoy. I, I thoroughly enjoy them, but I, I I recognize that they are not critically the best. You know what? One Marvel movie may be on there, and it w- it would be just because of how fun of a movie it is, and it's Guardians of the Galaxy. Like that might be on my list. Like. The, and there's there are individual examples where maybe you get, like top and, ten, maybe not a top five, but like like in a favorite top, movie all time. Yeah, like Ooh. if I if I'm doing my favorite movies of all time, I don't know if I could put Guardians of Galaxy in the top five. I like, could I could not I could, put them. In I the could top see five. it in top ten I, for sure. I could also like, because like if I'm looking at it and like whenever I think of like we just had the conversation about comfort movies, mm-hmm. there might be some overlap. Definitely. However. They're not the same thing inherently. No. Yeah. I have like uh, one or two that would overlap, I think. But I, I think I'd go a general different direction. Because like when I think of my comfort stuff, I'm not at all considering the critical perception or mm-hmm. how I feel about how good it is. Mm-hmm. When I think of my favorite, I can't help but incorporate that a little along with how much I just love the movie, how much I enjoy True. it. Like mm-hmm. – uh and see, like I think of like the the crossover there, like La La Land and Return of the Jedi are probably both top five movies all time for me, just like in terms of favorites. But like I'm also not even one hundred percent sure about La La Land there. Mm-hmm. Like I like 
Yeah, it's uh, movies are interesting because like you can have a comedy in your top five, but at the same time you could have a a, a movie that won like Academy Awards. You know, like yeah. at the same like a critically great movie. Like you like, could have uh, Step Brothers. Like like Step Brothers. Like it are, is probably a lot of people's like in their top five favorite movies just because like it's such a just such a classic comedy movie. Yeah, and it's like true. you can yeah could have it right next to an Interstellar like where they did literal physics, groundbreaking physics to create the simulations to show that black hole. Do you, like a Nobel prize was won because of these physics simulations. Like we know more about black holes because of this movie. Like that's insane. This movie advanced science legitimately like 10 years in the future. Like we didn't have these. Anyways, I'm going on a tangent. No, dude, Interstellar is fantastic. But, oh I actually, God, I actually I just gave that my first rewatch in years. Mm. Not, I mean, not several years, like just a couple. Mm-hmm. But, I, like when I when I watched that the first time, it was in three or three or four separate installments and in Dorsch's physics. Club. <laughs> yes, dude. It wasn't the first time I saw it, but I definitely, yeah, it was like the Bro, fourth. And or let fifth me tell you, I it. loved Dorsch, and he was such a good teacher. But boy, oh boy, was I not going to get whatever the fuck he was talking about. But let me tell <laughs> you, let me tell you, I looked forward to AP physics for those three or four. Yes, days, dude, that bro. was fun. Like it. It was really fun, and it's just like, I don't know, usually Matthew McConaughey is kind of like, he's good. He was good, like, in his older roles, but, you know, his his he's newer ones goofy. are a little cringy and goofy, but, like, this one was, like, he just killed it. Like, even though he's a little nerdy um, sometimes, but, like, he killed this. Every role was just so good, and just the the story itself was just, Dude, like, the story's holy fantastic. Fuck. And, I mean, like, you can't say enough about Christopher Nolan's Ugh. filmmaking. Like, and the soundtrack. Just... That soundtrack. Ron's I need Zimmer, the vinyl. Bro. I need the vinyl. Because, like, that is just, like, I, I don't – if we're talking – Miracle sex. If we're talking top movie soundtracks, that could be a cool draft. That could be a cool – ah, oh, man. See, that's one I would need to, like – prepare for. I, I would definitely do need to prepare yeah not off I the top of my head right here. I mean off uh, the fly like Interstellar Star Wars Indiana Jones um basically John Williams um his John role, Williams yeah, Jurassic Hans Park Zimmer, um, uh, Hans Zimmer yeah basically just Luke we're, we're gonna look to them <laughs> um Avatar The Last Airbender Loki Sleeper uh, soundtrack Lost Sleeper soundtrack um maybe I shouldn't be saying this for the draft. I'm not gonna oh no, I'm, no, I'm not gonna but... cap with you either. There's a there was a formative impact on my music taste done by how I met your mother. Really? Yes. Uh wow. and uh and like this is a different kind of soundtrack, obviously. Like we're talking the more composed movie soundtracks this Mm -hmm. is like they took several songs from several artists and plugged them into their show so Uh, it's a whole other thing but uh they they uh, they had their vibe like Mm -hmm. they knew what they were doing like Mm -hmm. with every song it kind of melds together they all create this one big feeling and it's like Mm -hmm. i was like damn i love this genre of music whatever the fuck it is a soundtrack can really like make or break a show oh absolutely Uh, show or movie yeah like i wonder like if you take out John Williams from Star Wars, like, is it really that badass? Like, the music adds so much in a scene. Like, Darth Vader, if you don't hear the bum, 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 like, if you don't hear that every time you see that man, like, you don't get as scared. Like, you're still scared of that guy. There are so many like, great musical cues in Star Wars. Hmm. And I mean, like, uh, the opening. You know what you're getting into. <laughs> like you know you're, you're not watching in... Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're instantly no, there. No, that, that's what's crazy about John Williams too is that like he created, and I mean there's uh, there's an uh, there's an obvious like big band influence from like the early 1900s and stuff. Like they were going for like a 30s 40s type vibe going into the 70s and making it brash and brass and all this, but it's. It like and I was actually another funny example. I was watching How I Met Your Mother just earlier today. Me and uh, Emily are giving it a watch because she hasn't watched it all the way through. And uh, Ted Mosby, the main character, becomes a college professor at one point, and uh, he is gifted by his friend Marshall a fedora and a whip. 
uh, because he's a professor at a college now. And he, and like these dudes and like all three of the main dudes are star Wars nerds. They make, they make star Wars jokes all the time. So that's got to play an influence on why I love the show. But Mm -hmm. so he's, he goes to the wrong classroom and he ends up having to run across campus to his other classroom. And they do this like fun camera. They do a fun camera thing. That's like way different than anything they do in the, in the rest of the show. That is obviously Indiana Jones inspired. And they play the, Dun, 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 you know like it's just uh-huh. uh, fantastic they play the indiana jones theme and he's running across campus it's just like that that sound that john how Williams. recognizable it is like yeah. off off one note you hear the first note of like star wars the star wars jurassic park like okay it, it could take like two or three notes but like you know what no. universe you're in whenever you hear like one of his songs like it's just true it's it. I like music is so impressive to me just because like I can't play an instrument and I can't even yeah, I read can't music. Either. And like I tr- I've tried to learn the piano and I, I know how hard even that just is. Like I want to learn how to play the violin. It's always been a bucket list item of mine. Usually the bucket violin lists is crazy. Bucket lists are like, you know, really cool things. I have really done. cool things. Yeah. Really cool. Like skydiving stuff. But like, Learning an instrument is like, I don't, that's like a, I Dude, don't know, I respect, that's, that's such a personal thing. Like, yeah, I respect like that's anyone, gotta be a challenge. Like, do anyone who is good at playing an instrument, uh, I respect the fuck out you know, of you. And if you maybe, aren't good and you're trying your ass off, I respect you too. Maybe boy, losing oh boy, to that, that one, shit hard. Yeah. Maybe losing Mr. Jag to that violinist wasn't that bad now that I think about it. He did kill it, bro. He Bro, freaking he was good at killed the violin. it. He he had that electric violin too. It was like the whole outline. It looked sick, bro. It was crazy. Damn, man. I was kind of pissed that I lost to him, though. And spoilers alert for the foreseeable future on first the fourth season of Sopranos. You'd learn that in Westworld season three, uh, for the record. Epic! I can't wait, yeah. dude. That show, oh. Oh, it's just so good. Oh, man, I can't wait to get back in. Uh, Actually, oh, yeah, no. I just finished season four of The Sopranos. Ooh, so Um, where where, where does that leave you with, like, uh, Ralphie? He's dead, Tony. Yeah! uh, Tony Bach did did the job, dude. I felt so bad for for, uh, Polly. Oh, Johnny, she was a whore! Yeah, like, Polly wanted to murk him, and I was like, yes, yes, just let Polly murk him for saying his... His wife was fat or whatever. Or no, Johnny Sack wanted to, yeah, to murk yeah. him, but then Polly also wanted to murk him. Did Polly want to murk him for some reason? Polly wants to murk everybody who's doing uh doing the crew dirty. I think yeah, I think Polly wanted to murder him for some reason. But I think it was Johnny Sack. Like whenever Johnny Sack was like, Hey, let me do the hit, you know, let me just murk him and then Tony was like, No, he's one of our biggest earners. I'm like, Oh, come on, just let him die. Like the dude's just getting annoying now. Like he was funny at the beginning, but like Man, he's just nah, that annoyed. part of the show is crazy though because it's like then I it really shows you though. it really shows you how the mafia's code ties their hands because like whenever Ralphie and but uh when Ralphie beats the pregnant woman to death the woman pregnant with his child to death and then everyone's like watching him do it and then Tony does something about it. He goes and beats the shit out of him for it. And all the made men rip Tony off of Ralphie and are like, and Ralphie goes, how dare you? I'm a made guy. And it's like, fuck, Damn. you can't do shit about that. You just got to like, be that's, a piece of that shit. That was like... the moment you wanted our anti-hero to anti-hero. Like, you want him to kill this guy for what he just did like and like mm-hmm. it's there's the fact, also another point there's what made it so much worse where you though want that. is that he like told her like the fantasy she wanted to hear right before he beat her up too like yeah. he played into it you know he was like oh my god like of course like of that like come like no the dude's a straight up psychopath he, he's even a if sociopath. he just beat her up obviously he killed her obviously that's enough like it, there's it's enough that he did that but like He's just such a piece of shit guy. Like, burned down freaking oh the my. horse stable. Like, oh my. I mean, like, understandably, he's getting pissed at Tony. Tony's taking everything from him. Took the horse, took his girl, whatever. Like, he's pissed. But, like, 
you can't kill a horse, bro. And the fact that he burned down other horse, like killed so many other animals too in that for like, you know, like four horses died or something like that. They said, I think like, dude, Ralphie was a fucking, like he's as, he's as big a bad in that show as anybody has been. Yeah. He's like, will be. And a lot of, like, a lot of the other guys, like, obviously there's a lot of crime that isn't just, but, like, a lot of them do it in, like, name of their family or for, yeah. like, you know, good, good reasons. In yeah, airport. see, and that, that, that's another interesting thing about the show <laughs> is the way you, the way you perceive everything yeah. because it is just a show, it's, you know, like. Yeah, it's like watching you and you're glorifying a stalker and someone who literally murders people to get to love someone like you it's like a really weird show to watch but like this is like okay because we know how the mafia works and it's like it's a real thing and like i don't know it's like it's kind of cool you know it's it's cool crime even though it's bad it's cool crime. it's like there see and that there there are differences though there are cool crimes and then there are several crimes we see these mafia men commit that are absolutely egregious and terrible. Uh, so it's want, like one at the end that devastated me was the dudes that they paid to do the hit on Carmine. And then Chris went back to him and was like, hey, here's the money to stay quiet. Hope you guys we're all good. Right. Yup. And then they come in and just blah, 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 just kill him and take the money right back. Like, you you know, they're not get Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We're just going to give you a large sum of money just to stay quiet about this major you know, assassination plot. I was like, these dudes are dead from the start. They're meeting under a bridge. Okay. Like, this is just sad. But, man. Nah, dude, yeah. there, the, and I've been, obviously, on my, ever since I finished The Sopranos, I've been on my mafia kick, mm. where I've been, I've been taking up a whole bunch of stuff. I watched Goodfellas and Many Saints in Newark, and I've checked out a couple of books on the mafia and stuff, and it, dawned an idea for me on with the upcoming book of boba fett like what if what if like book of boba could be a start and we do our weekly book of boba coverage mm. but it could be the introduction into a uh an organized crime uh podcast sort of like series where we kind of chronicle like uh not the history of mafia movies but like we kind of go through, we kind of like talk about one per episode for several weeks. We could like start with like 1934's The Public Enemy and go to The, the Godfather. Like, I think it'd be fucking awesome. Oh, yeah. I'm down for that. Well, I know, I, and uh, I know that like, and that'll be around the time that Kyler that, frees yeah. up a lot more too. Mm-hmm. And he will 100% be down for that too. And you know, like, I mean, I want to get Tavares back on here as much as I possibly can, as whenever I can. And I know he'd be down for that too. Maybe so, I can get some family history in here. I, I'll ask. Uh, there you go. Some of my people, like, hey, is this actually how? I'll, I'll ask him all the questions that uh everyone asks, like in The Sopranos when they meet Tony. Like, hey, is this yeah. really how it is? Did you have to? Did you have to prick your finger and do the blood and the thing? You know, like. I am in. <laughs> it was new at I the time, you and you're did. like, right now we're talking about it, and you're like, God damn. You know, <laughs> I was, I had, I, I had this thought the other day, and like thinking of just how lucky that I am to be on Earth, of all places in the universe. That's pretty goddamn lucky, infinitely lucky, almost. Um. Then I thought of how lucky I am to be in North America. Then I thought of how lucky I am to be in the United States. Then I thought of how lucky I am to be in Missouri. And, like, the parts of Missouri that I'm in, like, I kept going. And just, like, damn. Like, my life could be so much worse if I was just on another area of the planet. Dude, I've thought about that so many times. No, because, like, and, like, it goes even deeper than that. Okay, what are the odds that you are the sperm that reaches the egg? Bro, I'm a lucky-ass dude. Even though I got all these rare ass diseases that people wouldn't call me lucky for, we're all pretty goddamn lucky. Like yeah. the fact that I'm on the internet right now talking to you, um, that I don't have to worry about water, I don't have to worry about food, I don't have to worry about shelter, I don't have to worry about anything right now. I'm literally just recovering. I don't even go to like I'm not in. I literally am just dormant right now, basically. Not many people can do that in the world. Like it's true. Like that's it's an it's an insane situation that I'm in. And, like, 
I don't know. I just uh, like I've gotten into a lot more like philosophy and politics, like just within the last couple weeks, like just uh, I don't know, just thinking like how much like I really don't know, like how ignorant I really am, like when it comes to politics. And we all are like, like it's like and, and we, we've talked about this week in and week out on several Patreons in a row. But our education system so is bad. is the biggest the biggest detractor from our possibilities and our open and our opportunity to see how like truly just how bad we like as a country we have been like and I mean like even on the small we do scale. have so many like our freedoms are fantastic that like that and absolutely there are there are. Now, now there are plenty of places on the world that can say that, but there are still places that can't really, you know? So it's like, regardless, that's cool. I don't think any American can truthfully look me in the eye and say that we're the number one country in the world. Dude, I can't. No, absolutely the fuck not. Like, there are people that say that, though. We are not. Oh, no. I, I, and I like, tell, and I'm, I'm friends with a couple of them. We are on the brink of literal collapse. Like, it is like we are not doing well. We might not even be top. We're probably not top ten. Like we're not doing well. <laughs> like socially, we're not doing well. Economically, we're not doing well. There are many things that we are just not doing. Manufacturing, like the United States, used to be the manufacturing powerhouse of the world. Just used to be that way. Now, if you want to get a hoodie produced in the United States, it's going to be sixty dollars by the time you buy it. Like, it's just like we are going in a direction that is so. We're just getting worse and worse and worse, and everyone is just like – no one wants to admit that we're not doing good because we're America, and we're we're always good, you know? But like now what? we need help. Like we need help. It's just we, – we need – the help we need is to help our people realize that we are in trouble and that we are not doing good. Well, like, and that's what's, that's what's a shame about the two-party system as it were. Because so because we have the two party system, we are interlocked in our ways for as long as we have the two party system. Because we are so divided on every issue, and regardless of what what your politics are, these are not the two sides. In fact, these are two points on the political spectrum that are actually pretty close to the middle or to the right like it's like as far as like our policies in the general go like the most progressive person in biden's cabinet is probably not that progressive like no. even in a democratic government right now like there's not that many progressive people in there and it's it's because like when you when you get to those high levels of government we also have such a problem with our with our corruption like they're being paid by so many mutual funds and so <laughs> they're many getting trust paid so funds. much like, money it's it, it's it, I, this is what i also thought is that like i think like um initially like a government like with capitalism could work but it's just over time it just gets more and more corrupt over time it's just naturally how it goes and yeah. we've just reached that point to where we're almost at like maximum corruptness and it's just time for like something it it is time for something new like it ca it just doesn't breed innovation it doesn't breed um like it, initially it breeds competition and, and, and innovation for the right things but then an, later on it exploits every, yeah every company is trying to save every dollar they can to give you the cheapest product they can give you but sell it for the most most they can sell it for like that's what they're trying to do they're trying to skip out at as many corners as they can so it's you're not getting the best product you can like if apple was truly motivated by innovation they would not be releasing the same phone every single year and charging you a grand for the same thing every year and then changing a camera bump you know every four years or something like that like the f phones would be so different if, if companies were like truly pushed by innovation but it's just you need to spend money to do that. You don't make money well, by doing that. And that's the thing is that like, but that's okay. We have to realize that that is okay. It's okay to waste money in that sense. Like we should be wasting money to try to like go green. Innovate. And the fact that like, we're not like working on our like energy systems in America, like Europe, in Africa, and like every other continent on the planet 
is putting some solar, some crazy energy plan together, and they are working on it right now. Like Africa, they are setting up these massive energy transfer lines to hopefully set up like solar panels in the desert to provide massive energy to like the surrounding parts of Europe. We are doing nothing. We have no plan for anything solar. Like it's all private companies that are like going to have to come up with this stuff. And it's just like, are we really going to wait on these private companies or like uh, we have to like step in to do something like it is. I'm 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 oppose a grand a grand theory that uh, uh has only occurred to me recently, and I don't know how much I really believe in it or how drawn out or how it's a little conspiracy y, mm. but I don't think it's that far fetched given what we see. Fair. As you were just saying, all the continents everywhere are preparing for some sort of way to keep living. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, and what does America do but keep just pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping money into that military and and that and that and I think I hope we're not going to war man dude can you like is that no, what you're getting to like the, the, amount, of, the amount of prepping we do and the fact that we 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 already do not have a match and we are going to that's the only place there's innovation that's they true. Keep, they keep getting better and better and better and bigger and badder with our military while no one else is even close to catching up. And frankly, that can only mean <laughs> we have one plan for later on whenever we need to do it. And it's fucking invade. <laughs> like, I, I don't doubt that. Like, I, I think that there will there eventually comes a point where everything else in the country is so shitty. Our our systems are ran so poorly, but our military kept getting that funding. Like, if nothing can change. And that's the thing is, like, even if we go to war, we'll probably win. Like, that's the thing. is like, even, it, even if it is us versus the world, like, we still probably win just because of our Navy. We could cut off shipments to everywhere in the world if we wanted to like that. Like, like if we wanted to take over the world, America has the best resources to do so. It's just how it is. Our Air Force is massive. Our naval fleet is massive. We cover the whole world. There's no one that could beat us. It, it would literally take the world. Like, literally everyone would – the whole world would have to work together to beat us. And, like, that's a scary thought. Like, we yeah, – It's like – it's a concern of, like, I'm – I'm not concerned for America in terms of its survival. Yeah. I'm concerned for everywhere else in the world. Yeah. Like, yeah, if, uh, if I was like ruler of the world right now, um, I would just kind of say like, all right, USA, um, we're just going to raise the Mexico line halfway up and the Canada line halfway down. All right. They're doing way better than us, even though Mexico seems worse. It's really, I, I don't know. I don't know where I'd rather live right now. Like, honestly, dude, dude, that's, that's the other thing is that like. A lot of countries in the world are like us. So that's that's another problem, too, mm-hmm. is that, like, would, they might not pump as much money into their military and stuff. They might be distributing their funds uh, a little bit more properly. Mm-hmm. But there is corruption everywhere in the world. There is capitalism. And capitalism is everywhere. It's just, like, the more you give time for capitalism to evolve, literally in its nature will just, like, breed corruption. That's, that's just what it does. Like, over time, that's just what it does. What will happen? Companies like Amazon will take over the world, literally, if you give them enough yeah. time. Like, it's, it's, I, I don't know. Like, I, I really like took a look at myself and realized how crazy of a person I am, like, with my political beliefs and how all over I am. Like, I used to think growing up that I was a Republican. Like, I used to think I was a conservative. Like, I, I don't. I honestly don't know. Like, I I don't think a conservative or a liberal really fits the bill for who I am. Like, I truly think I am like a real middle of the road kind of guy. But like, like, economically, like, I thought I loved capitalism growing up. It's just what we were taught in school. You know, we were taught to love it. So like, I thought I did. But then like, the more I just look at it, it's like, it's just the rich stay richer. Like, it's not, it's like, literally, that's how it's going to be. 
And like, if you're not rich to start, you can't do anything. Like there's no help. And it's just like, it's the whole idea is like the opportunity is there for anyone to become a billionaire. But like, if you start in poverty, what are you going to, or if you start with a small loan of a million dollars from your parents, like who's going to, who's going to be better off, you know, like, yeah, it, it, okay. And then like, I started to, to like look into just other like political beliefs, like socialism is very popular right now. And I very learned how ignorant I was of what socialism was. Like school taught me that socialism is just taking money from the rich and giving it to the poor. And that's pretty much it. Like that's, that's, we're taught so much of the economic socialism, but like the socialism that's important like today is like the, like what socialism stands for, like the virtues of socialism, if that makes sense. Like it's yeah, absolutely. the economic part is such a, I mean, it, it's a very big part of a socialistic government, but like, it's not the main point. Like the main point is just to give everyone basic, you know, needs of life. So yeah, yeah it's like, that's literally like the main point. And everyone wants to say like, you know, like, I've been watching a lot of Hassan. Um, I don't know if you know him. He's a Twitch streamer and he's like, he's like one of the biggest like political at like entertainers that is socialist and he's like gotcha. blowing up. And the reason he's blowing up is because there's a lot of people like me that grew up conservative that aren't really conservative. And we're just, you know, kind of whether it's brainwashing or just lied to. Um, and then we, kind you know, we are getting to the age where we're beginning to think on our own and kind of think of all these things that we were taught. And we learn that, you know, we're just taught this one way to look at things and that's it. And like, I don't know, he's just, uh, he makes kind of politics entertaining too. You know, it's in a joking way. Yeah. It's, it's more fun. It's yeah. not, it's not boring, but like he talks about real issues. Like he gets really into the nitty gritty and he talks about like every topic you, you can think of. Um, and it's just got me to like actually looking into a lot more political news. Like um, I use this website, like now that, uh, it what's it called all sides or something like that and it, it lays out everything that happens like throughout the day in politics and it gives you the central stories it gives you the right stories and it gives you the the like left stories so like you you don't have a chance to be like uh to be misinformed by any media like if you just watched a cnn or just watched a fox news like you get every side you know right there in front of you you get the you get everything and that's like what i've started just like reading things from and like it's so much easier to get into politics whenever you're not just watching the news or like political people speak like well, and th that is, there is another problem here and it's that uh a lot of suburban white people don't even think about it like like that that's the problem is that like you are you are unique in a way, because you you even thought to mm. look into it, and that's so sad. And like like you said, whether that's brainwashing or it's or it's just not knowing any better. Like, literally, if I was just told that like socialism was just standing for like for everyone just to be, you know, just comfortable in their lives, like not have you know, to worry and, about ending up like, on the street. Yeah, and not like being taught like it's just this failing system, you know, what like what like it, every every time it's like try to be implemented too, it's in a country like Venezuela or like, you know, a a North Korea, you know, of countries that aren't good to begin with. Like it, it, it's it's you can't just say like it's a failing system whenever it's in countries that like are doomed to fail from the start like and that's that's another thing too is that like we are taught growing up socialism and communism are inherently dic dictatorial mm. they are like if they are implemented there is a dictator involved it is an authoritarian regime that does not have to be the case at all like yeah at all that's like it's not even like part it's yeah i, I really don't like it's so sad like I really wonder how like many high schools are like like Blue Spring South, but like weren't and you want to know what's even like more sad is that we weren't even the worst one, <laughs> like that's even close. so crazy man. Like no, nah, because like the shit Emily em, like they didn't teach in in my girlfriend's small town hometown high school that we 
dropped nuclear bombs. They left that out of World War II? They left that out of they World War II. They left the ending out of World War II. The literal yeah. end of the war. The, she she knew about D-Day. She didn't know. Where we killed two cities. <laughs> Yeah, we literally we obliterated two cities. two cities, and they're like, and dude, when I when I was like, I was like, uh, that we were watching a TV show or something, and I was like, God, isn't it crazy that we straight up nuked two cities and killed eighteen million people or something like that? And she was like, she was like, yeah. And then she she got on her phone and like looked into oh, it and stuff, and she started no. crying next to me, and I was like, Oh my. God. God. I was like, oh my god, did you never learn that? I guess it's literally the same thing as me watching The Watchmen and then learning about like the Oklahoma City like massacre, like things like that that we were never taught. Like I looked that yeah. up and I legit cried right then and there. I'm like, oh my god, like we just weren't we just weren't told about well, it. I mean like, like I I'm I I I don't know if you've uh, made it around to like the stories about like Central Park. Mm. Like Central Park was an African American oh, village until yeah. it was demolished to be turned into Central Park. Yeah. Like there's it, it's so bad. Like it's just like I don't know. It, I just I don't know if it's just education. I don't know if it's just the media. I don't know if it's like I don't know what's gotten into like what has changed. You know, like twenty years when we were kids, like things weren't good, like with the housing crisis and everything. But the country seemed to just be okay. Like you, we were we were not doing well, but we're still fine. But we're just so divided on everything. Like, See, that's the thing too, is that like I think I think we were kids and I think I think mm-hmm. it has gotten more extreme. Like, don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. like we are more divided than we've been in like a while. Like I'm talking like sixties and seventies. <laughs> like Civil that, War that type sort of beat? divided. Like Civil War type beat? Yes, yeah, <laughs> sort of, a little bit. <laughs> And I, I, it's, it's a, it's a combination of everything. Mm. It's like, and it, 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 the root of it it, is the corruption. Like we've, we've been talking about it, the corruption brought on by capitalism. And it, it's like our economy essentially can't work unless we are pumping money into our manufacturing weapons and giving those weapons to the military. So like, we just have to keep funding the military industrial complex, which also affects our prison industrial complex. There's only one reason we still have all these prisons with all these people like, and it's to keep making shit so mm-hmm. that like they, at cheap, cheap labor, it's slave labor mm-hmm. like that. Like the, that's what it is. It's man. It, it's just like, the world is is just in such a sad state, but like the U.S. brings it to a whole nother level. Like at least the rest of the world is trying to do things and like putting forth like they're like I don't know. It just seems that we're we're trying to fix stupid problems that don't matter to block what actually matters. Like yeah. we're all worried about who's the president at the time. Whatever. Like it doesn't matter anymore. After Trump, the presidency doesn't matter anymore. Like it's. It, who cares who's in the office now? Nothing's going to get done unless like, like, I don't know. I, I just think the presidency, like, it's just, it's a thing that will matter kind of less and less unless we get like a legitimate presidential president, like as our next person. But I don't See, think here's, that'll here's, happen. Here's something that like blows my fucking mind. And I don't know if we've talked about this before, but like on January 6th, when they stormed the Capitol building, mm-hmm. It was over Joe fucking Biden. Mm -hmm. Do you realize how fucking brainwashed you are at that point to believe that Joe Biden is as far left and will ruin your Republican life? You know, Joe Biden, a guy who literally was a Republican for several years. There was a reason Barack Obama put him on his ticket. and It's because he was an old white man who appealed to Republicans. Like, what the fuck? fuck are y'all even talking about if it was like okay even if it was like a bernie sanders like i still wouldn't understand storming a capital um and doing that thing i oh, absolutely know. yeah no but like i would I, I bernie sanders get where they're that. coming from because it's like it's just it's just sad because like a lot of people that like think they truly believe in capitalism like really don't it's just it's like if they truly knew like just what 
like capitalism was doing and they truly knew what socialism like actually meant like i think a lot of people would change their minds i think like i think and that's that's why like school is so important like or just like teaching your kids like my kids like i like i will bring my kids up very differently knowing like this information like i'm glad that i've kind of woken up i guess you could say like i feel like i've woken up like because i truly don't know like some of my thoughts like i truly don't know where i stand it's uh i don't know it's kind of like uh been a little freeing to kind of just think on my own and you know just like i'm really trying to like because i i don't like really know like where i stand now like i'm kind of in a moment where it's like i've been lied to for so long and like i I haven't really thought for any amount of you know considerable time of how i feel about certain things like obviously there are stances that i'm pretty hard on um and that i stick to but like as as it comes to the economy and like politics right now like you're you're a blank slate as it were yeah like it's uh it's very interesting um because i i don't know i just i feel like i don't know like in in the like philosophy side like of just just hearing both sides to everything like um you know just not choosing to block off opinions that you don't like you know like that's what a lot of people do just because you don't agree with it you choose to not look at it it's very just common thing that humans do and everything but you have to look at things that you don't agree with in order to understand what you think you agree with more like it's you have to know where both people are coming from and i've just i've been introduced to a lot of political people like or in the politics scene that just talk very civil and uh, it's been just very I don't know. It's been nice from just hearing people scream and just yell at each other. And, and you know why? And this is, this is an, this is one of the reasons that maybe, a uh, reading would do a lot of people good. Mm. You can't hear someone yell. That's in a true. Uh, you can go only, ahead only and hear read. your own thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and read some. And like, I mean, and obviously some people will read something and read it like, hey, they're attacking me, even though they very well could not be. Is there uh, – okay, I hear all the time, like, Karl Marx. He's, like, the dude who made social – like, the idea of – like, he – Marx. Well, he wrote the communist – he wrote the communist manifesto. Okay, so that's what he wrote. Okay, but it's like a – okay, I just, I just didn't know what they were like. I'm just so – like, I – literally and i'm not afraid to admit it i'm just so ignorant in uh politics and, like i just Dude, don't know a lot of things if if you are interested like when you come by tonight i have several books uh that i would 100 percent be willing to loan you for a bit if you want to if you want to tear through them because i have several that uh uh dive into various like uh various topics like i have a book uh an, entirely on eco-socialism that is about how we can – how our top priority should be saving the environment. Oh, I need that. And providing, and providing for our citizens. Literally, yeah. Like that's – I need – that. that has like been my drive like just in life in general, like right now. Like I truly want to like become an engineer to like help save the earth now. Like I don't – Like and that, that very reason was a huge – that played a huge part in why I became a vegetarian. Mm. Like beyond, beyond just the, the – uh, you know, like the animals poor, like poor them, but like our, our, our like our cattle production is literally true. destroying forests. It's responsible like for we are like tearing 40%. down. It's like yeah. it's huge. Like it's so bad. And like whenever like it's so sad because like it was a big problem and people like saw it as a big pro- or didn't see it as a big problem. But then like whenever like cows are farting now and CO two getting in the air, like it made it a joke. Like. It made yeah. it a joke and no one like thought about it anymore. It's like, oh, you know, like scooped under the rug again. You know, it's like if I could become a vegetarian or a vegan, I probably would. But medically, I literally can't right now. My stomach yeah. cannot digest vegetables. It is the worst food that I can eat right now, actually. Damn. Um, so like I I miss I I've wanted to eat a salad for so long. You don't understand. Like I have been missing a salad. Like I cannot wait to like eat salad again. But like Man. I just uh, 
I don't know. It's just uh, been interesting. Just yeah, like a clean slate. Just I mean, not a clean slate. I've obviously had life experiences that a lot of my opinions are formed around. Uh, most of them are very recent in my life um, because a lot of the ones that did happen back then, I was in school still, and yeah, exactly. So you figured out yeah, a way yeah, to yeah. justify them. So it's yeah. uh, it's been been interesting. I like just like looking at every side, like. I never would have thought in my life that I'd be like, hmm, communism, this could work. Like never in my life, no, you know, yeah. like that's crazy. Like growing up in school, like I was taught, like, I yeah, never like, would have thought that, bro. Like, like I was like, what like, the fuck? Yeah, like, communist? Like, socialism, like I, I just like, there's such a negative connotation to the word, you know, it's like, that's what we were taught. It's yeah. like, it's just such a negative like thing. And see, like it, and I, I don't even necessarily, like, I, I, I don't entirely believe in communism and i i mean like there are aspects of all these of all of these things that like i don't entirely agree with but like that's the thing is like someone had to create these things mm. like we got to figure something out that works because objectively there have been several failed states with mm. all of these systems that's true. so it's like yeah like there is a thing in it's worth saying that this is like the longest you know, standing of one government, whatever. It's not, that's not like true though. Like the people, when people say America is the longest standing government, you know, off one constitution, whatever, like you got to realize this constitution was set up for change and it's changed 28 times in amendments yeah. or 20. Is it in the thirties? I don't know. I think it's, it's 28. I, I don't know. Like it's literally changed. I, like when I was in high school, it was like 27 or 28. And think about so. this. When we were born, two men could not get married legally. That's insane that that in our lifetime that that decision was just made by yeah. the government of all people. The government uh, said that you couldn't get married. Like, like that's that, that's just insane to think about how like they even have a say in something like that. You know, like I guess yeah, like what? marriage is just a legal thing. But like if it's truly just like, you know, a couple, whatever. But like, I don't know. It's just like an insane concept that like marriage was just illegal. Like if you were just yeah. yeah, like of the same gender, like just well, I mean, like, and I, we've been a country for for what two hundred fifty years, coming up on it anyway. Since seventeen seventy six, isn't that the so year? Two hundred, two hundred like forty six or something like that. Mm -hmm. And like eighty of those ago. Like black people and white people couldn't be in the like same one same lifetime place. ago. Like yeah, oh, yeah. Oh man, wow. It, I it's crazy. Like uh, people think like whenever we're talking about capitalism, it's like the free market. You have more freedom, but like, do you really? Like every the only if okay true if you're in the top one percent. True. Yes. If you're not, no. It oppresses you if you're not in the top 1%. Like People also have a misconception that when we say, like, fuck the rich, we also mean the people who are making $400,000 a year. Mm. That's actually relatively good compared to a lot of motherfuckers who are, like, there are people... With multiple billions of dollars. One of those is insane. I, I thought about just how much a billion is. I couldn't wrap my head around it. I went up. I started at $1. And I'm like, okay. I understand a dollar. I understand 10. I understand 100. I understand 1,000. I got to 10,000. I'm like, wait. I haven't even had that in my bank account ever at one time. Then I got to 100,000. I'm like, I've never had that much in my life all put together. A um, million dollars. That's like winning the lottery. My life would be pretty much saved. I could do anything I wanted with a million dollars, pretty much. $10 million. Uh, my family's set now. $100 million. Generations are set. Many generations are set. $500 million? Even more. And then, but then you get to fucking a billion? And then you get to almost $200 billion. Then he crossed it. I think he crossed $200 billion. Here's the thing, bro. Jeff Bezos, that man's money could save the world. And if 
here's the thing. <laughs> he could save the world and have billions of dollars left. And that's where the problem lies for me. Mm. Yo, I know you you rich as fuck, so you spending money too. So you got to pay more to upkeep all the lifestyle shit you're doing. But hey, thoughts thoughts on maybe instead of $200 billion, <laughs> you have you have $50 billion <laughs> and you save everything. <laughs> like... You know what's even crazier? And I'm, I'm becoming more sad every day because my boy that I've always held in such high esteem, my, my Elon, um, he's becoming a little more corrupt the more I learn about him. Uh, I've opened up yeah. to learn about him a little bit more. I still think of what he stands for is good, and the companies that he has are okay, but the things they do are pretty bad. Um, it's and see that's the, that's what's that's what's inherently wrong with capitalism. He almost has three hundred billion, Elon. He's two hundred and seventy five billion dollars right now. Yeah. What does that even mean? You know. Does he even know what that means? Like, okay, obviously a lot of his money is not just money he can liquid. access. It's yeah. in his companies, yeah. whatever. He still has billions of dollars he can access, though. Like, there was a TikTok that, that was very interesting. It said, if I was a rich person, I would just buy every commercial for a Sunday night football. It's like $24 million. To Jeff Bezos, that's like $20. You could literally buy every commercial, the every commercial slot, like, and that got me thinking, like, a twenty-four million dollar purchase for someone like Elon or Jeff Bezos is like me going to Quick Trip to buy a Gatorade. Yeah, like, like I, what I have to put into the thought of buying a Gatorade or how much that's going to affect my bank account. That's basically the same as a billionaire buying an entire commercial slot for an entire day of football, prime football. Do you know, like, that's kind of insane power. Do you know what one person could do with that much commercial time of just speaking to the American public? Like, they could do whatever they wanted. Like, I mean, I don't think that could happen. Like, in the real world, I don't think a network would just let that happen. But, like, for enough money, they would. Yeah, they absolutely would. Like, like, <laughs> well, it's crazy because, like, it, like our media... Like, the corruption within our media goes beyond our news, mm. too. Like, media companies are owned by really, really, really rich white men who want to stay really, really, really rich. That's how, that's how, they, that's how they work. That's, uh, like, this line right here, including the names of Mark, the Zuck, the Bill, the Elon, the Jeff. If you combine those people, they're worth $1.4 trillion. With a T. That's, uh, like, what Jeff Bezos has supplied America with is priceless. Like, they have offered a service that is legitimately, like, kind of too good to be true. It's at the cost of a very lot of bad things. But, like, this guy, he deserves a lot of money. B with a bill like a billion, you just don't need that. There should be no, no need. Like the fact that we have billionaires should show you that like we're failing. It shouldn't be a a, a, a thing of success. Like seeing these large large numbers and Elon's and Jeff Bezos's net worths literally approaching a trillion dollars within five years, if they grow at this like. They gr if they keep growing, like they will become trillionaires if we just let them keep going. They will. Like, no, they will. They will take over the world. This should be very scary. Like, Amazon has the capability of taking over the world. They have the, they have the capability of becoming the government one day, maybe. Like, you should like it's like the power Amazon has in the world. And here's here's where I go. Yes, Jeff Bezos has made some money moves in getting them to where they are. Absolutely. But no man who just wanted to start an online bookstore should have all that power. Like, he was just like, you know, it would be really cool if people could just get sent books. 
And now he has fucking yeah, billions. Yeah, we think of we think of Jeff and Elon as like these crazy, you know, high figure status people. They were literally just random people. Like they were they were nobodies before they had their big idea. They're just random people that now have more power than they know what to do with. See, and this 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 again <laughs> plays into the uh the whole opportunity thing. The uh it's a free market. Anyone can do anything. And it's like Yeah. Jeff Bezos worked for that to an extent. There's also a, like a massive amount of exploitation, a a massive amount of luck. Like let's let's face it, this anything getting that big and becoming what it is requires a degree of luck. That's just the that's just the case and it happens with anything and with with any talent, with any uh, with anything, I got my hospital calling me. This I just have uh, to dude, read to schedule this appointment. It should take like two gotcha. minutes, hopefully. You're cool. Go for it. All of the lonely people. Woke up this morning, got yourself a gun. Mama never told you about it. Wow, Not the timing of that is uh. Very coincidental. That was just a reminder call for my next appointment, but I'm I was waiting for a call back from that same hospital, so it just seemed like that call. Oh, that's but, wow! So never mind. I'm back. Right, cool. Um, what are we talking about? Jeff? Uh, billions. Jeffy B. <laughs> Jeffy B. Jeffrey Bezos. Man, I just uh, Jeffrey Bezos. It is very interesting that uh, like him. And Elon, the two richest people on the planet, they both have rocket companies. They both want to go to Mars. And like, if I was the richest person in the world, I think they probably know a lot more information than us. Just of how the world works. They know a lot of secrets. They know probably everything. Why are they both trying to get off? You know, it, it, is it really just to, to bring humanity to a multi-planetary species? Is that really the, the purpose? Or is it really to... um? that they've realized that the earth is too far gone. Like we have fucked it up too much and there's no hope probably anymore, or they're getting ready for that possibility. And they're going to save every rich person that there is by sending them to Mars. Like, I know that's a little conspiracy, but, but it's really not at this point. It's like, I don't think like it's, and I mean, like even, even last year with, or the year before or whatever, with our, our very own government, having a space force now like what does that why? mean what does that mean what like they're like why on earth to the public knowledge would we need space military hmm we've yet to detect life anywhere but our own uh we have no immediate threats especially in our solar system in our galaxy and uh light years away from us actually um, if someone was able to come and attack us, we wouldn't stand a chance. Because if they can get to us without us knowing, we're far gone. Like they have, they're so yeah. like, there's no point. There's really no point unless you're that advanced to have a space force. Like unless you can go to other galaxies, like then, then it makes sense. You know, if you're going to be an imperialistic galaxy company or country. Uh, yeah. country same difference nation what would it be called at that point empire probably i don't know empire probably something bad um it's uh yeah it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense just something to pump more money in you know uh why not well and it, it also poses the question like if we really are trying to do all this shit on mars it's gonna take so long that's not what people realize is that like we're not like 20 years away from living on Mars. Like we're oh, 20 no. years away from there being 20 people on Mars. Yeah. Like it's it's not a civilization until like 300 years in the future. Like yeah, probably 500 thousands of years. Like we still have to terraform the planet. We have to make it able to grow plants. We have to put water on the planet somehow. There are very big problems that we have no idea how to fix. The best leading theory we have is to nuke the poles of Mars. It's the quickest way to make it a habitable planet, and uh, it still takes, like, tens of thousands of years. So 
we're in no no time soon are we going to be living on a lush green other planet that's perfect in utopia um but it does give us the opportunity to start over which is very interesting and i hope we don't handle it the wrong way because as of right now there can't be a government on mars at all we've already signed like with the un and everybody on earth we've if anyone tries to establish any form of government on anything that's not earth like war not cool like space is no one's property and that is already defined which is very good like it's very but like it could change obviously maybe that's what the u.s is prepping for is they want mars to call their own because they know if they want to do that you have and then to to and work. then that that has a whole other branch to the military theory earlier like what if we're just pumping yes. a whole bunch of money into our military cuz we plan on taking Maybe over Maybe we Mars. should use our Marvel and Star Wars theory building to take down the government. Like <laughs> this is kind of like getting a little creepy of how it's connecting a little too much. Like it's like very known that space is off limits. Like every country agrees. If one country on the world would not agree, oh, two, USA and North Korea. I'd say would be the two countries that wouldn't agree with that right now. Um, and I'd say the one country that has the capability of actually making it their own would be the U S space force. Kind of creepy. Why would we need that? Hmm. No one else has a space force, but us, you know, you can shoot, uh, one singular metal BB at a satellite in space and it would completely blow up and destroy the entire satellite. No fucking Yeah, shit. like 10 miles an hour. Because you got to think, satellites moving at like uh, 18,000 miles per hour or something like That's that, falling around the Earth. Like, actual space war uh, without shields and like that technology is really boring. Because like, you don't need big guns or lasers. You just need like a little, just one little, that's it. That's all it takes. And, uh. So these satellites don't be hitting pebbles or nothing? No. Um. Oh, man. Yeah, no, they're, uh. Can't be doing that. I mean, obviously, they, uh, they, some satellites like interfere with, with some things, and that's how they come crashing down or burn up in the atmosphere. But, uh, True. they be moving. They do be some moving. Some of them don't. I remember, uh, either. some of them just. Remember when Elon launched those Starlink those satellites all in a row? Mm hmm. Starlink. They're still doing it. I was just like outside. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, what the fuck is that? I was like, what have I seen? And then I Googled it and I was like, that's wild. That's ins like, that was like, that was insane. Like, that, like, the, f okay, they're launching like so many satellites. It's uncanny. Like, they launch like 50 satellites per rocket or like 100, like 200 satellites sometimes per rocket. Like, 200 of these satellites go up into space break up and then somehow orbit the earth um and don't collide into anything or each other and this is actually like really scary because this once it's all said and done it is it like the fastest internet anywhere on the world even if you're in an ocean like doesn't matter where you are like you will just have perfect internet everywhere and like one company having control over the internet. Like, literally. Do you, like, uh, the more I think of Elon is the more the conspiracy gets even creepier. Because every single one of his companies is set up to work on Mars. The boring company is needed for Mars. That's the only way that transportation will work. No way you're driving on the surface of Mars. No way you're making highways on Mars. You have to dig tunnels. The boring company. Tesla is building electric vehicles. The only energy source they will have on Mars is solar power. They need electric vehicles. SpaceX, well, that one's pretty self-explanatory, I think. They have to get there. And uh, the last one, uh, Neuralink, the chip in the brain, is uh, the creepy one. <laughs> the one that a lot of people don't like to talk about. But... I see. It's inevitable. And that's what I've accepted. From Westworld, like, it's inevitable. Like, I, it legitimately, Westworld has made me comfortable with the fact that eventually, at some point, robots will take over or become part of us. Like, it's 
whether it's 10,000 years Dude, down the line. Bro, you haven't I know. even but I, dug into that specific idea. That's yet. awesome. I cannot wait for that show. I can why did that's I like stop? what what that's what season three is about. <sighs> that show is so up my alley. Like it is the most up my alley show I've ever seen. No, as soon as I as soon as I was like, have you watched Westworld? And you were like, No, I was like, I can't think of a show more perfect for anybody. Yeah. It's uh like it was just like this is the content that just goes through my brain all the time. This is what I think of all day, every day. Like this is, it's just, that's what I'm a nerd about. You know, that's my hobby. Like everyone has their thing. Um, my thing just happens to be math, science, and technology. That's just what gets me interested in things. Um, and now it's actually politics and philosophy. Philosophy is really cool. I don't know. I've been like deep diving into philosophy and like, um, um, a lot of it is like – a lot of the philosophy I like is um, there's so many things in life that you just don't need or that you don't even think of that are bad for you um, that you just need to like eliminate. Um, like if you have any form of craving, like a craving is like – you shouldn't have to crave anything. In, in an ideal, perfect human, you don't crave anything. You're just – you know. Obviously, that can't happen. You are. But, like, there are certain cravings that you can get rid of. Like, uh, like I'm getting – I'm like, whenever I used to, um, sm- like, use nicotine all the time, like, that would be a thing that would just be something that, like, I just would ne- – I'm never going to do again. Um, like, alcohol, I'm just – I don't think I'll ever drink again. Like, unless it's, like, a, a glass of wine or, like, a very – I don't think I'll ever want to get drunk again. I'm never getting – I'm not getting drunk again. Yeah, like there's that. just certain things that like I I feel are like childish almost. Like it's just very weird that humans keep doing them like as they get older. And like I understand like when you're young and, and dumb and you want to have fun. But like there's – I don't know. These things are like very bad for you. Like alcohol is just very bad for you and like not needed in any situation. doesn't help you. A glass of wine a week maybe would help you, like, actually clean out your system and stuff. But, like, I don't know, certain things like that, like, uh, just trying to get rid of bad things in my life and kind of minimalize things. Think of things just very simply. And Dude, it, I, I, can't, I can't express enough. Like, the, the sort of thing you're going through right now, like, uh, this mental exploration and trying to – and, like, I, it's still ongoing for me, too. But, like, it really started as a result of that depressive period I had mm. in 2018 where I just started, like, I was like, I need something to get me not so terribly depressed about everything. Mm. Because, like, so basically that minimalistic making things simple is really – is so crucial because mm. like i have essentially uh eliminated anger mm. i do not feel that emotion yeah. like ever i'm rare rarely mad I, and i think that is, and like is that maybe like the main thing that i am very like proud of is that i'm a lot more chill and that i like i'm a lot more collected I don't get heated as often, you know, like they're like with certain friends, like, yeah, we still argue and stuff like that. But like, I, I think I'm like more of the one that mediates now and it is more of like, I don't know, like the avatar, like got me deep into philosophy too. Like while watching avatar, the last airbender, like just a, just a great show and like just gets into philosophy and stuff. And it's like, I don't know. It's just really interesting. Like being a character like the avatar, like just a mediator, like a, you know, like it's, it's just a like a I don't know it's it's a good kind of position to put yourself in because you get like every side of things and you know you you have to think of you have to truly like collect your thoughts before you give them and like I don't know it's just like uh I like just thinking a lot of time to think lately so it's just yeah. been now I feel that dude I feel that for sure and God, just that making shit simple. Mm. It, it it really is just like 
it's the shit because it it makes it start it makes decisions easy. Mm-hmm. Like it's like what do what do I need? Do I need any of this? No. All right. That's Fuck true. it then. I haven't. Well, my whole bank account kind of got scammed, so like I haven't had money to spend. But like I haven't wanted sure. to like. That's also like a large part of like consumerism is like I'm I, I've I've uh like I've looked at all like my computer and like all these things I have like technology and stuff like I like I don't know I'm not like I splurge too much on things that like truly like I don't need to like it's just yeah. like so I don't know like obviously like these are my hobbies and people splurge in their hobbies and stuff but like there's still a point that can become too much like uh i don't know just been uh it's been fun coming uh on just listening to other topics and stuff just like learning it it is interesting though because like the 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 very thought process that i have proposed here that that making shit simple can absolutely go the other way like it can result in nihilism. Mm. And like I think that like nihilism while fair uh and like I can understand how you got there 100% uh cuz I've I've very much so been there. Uh it, it it it's like I mean I guess it's like I don't want to think that way, but it's just like I have such a scientific brain that it's just like yeah. off probability basically and it's like it it's uh it's depressing and comforting to kind of think that way if you can accept the fact that like it's it's very sad to accept the fact that like if you want to accept that we're here for nothing and nothing has any obligation to you and we're just here to live like then it makes the time you have that much more valuable and that's like the way i see it i don't i don't want to just be like you know the universe is out to get you or like it's you know everything it doesn't matter whatever like that's not the main point the main point is like it's just to to make the time you have more valuable and see i i fuck with that perspective and ultimately what i meant by that like with nihilism Mm. is that nihilism in general on the whole is the idea of not believing in anything Mm. you know like and i i don't see how that can a be truly possible or Mm. be not have a like if you have a positive a pot like that perspective of nihilism like that is genuinely a good like that is as good a perspective as there is on nihilism Mm -hmm. because like most of the time you'll get more you'll get more ricks ah like if not nothing matters so who cares like yeah yeah nah nah it's like yeah it's like compassionate nihilism almost like uh yeah it's uh it's like the whole thing I think is like just how our universe came to be is so incredibly confusing and we don't know. We, we know so little of how can something go from nothing to everything, an infinite, vast, you know, like that just – it's uncomprehendable. But the like way I think about it is it's just another problem that science hasn't solved. It's just another experiment that hasn't been found out how it's how it's been done yet. And the thing is, is that it can be found out that it is a god. Like literally, like that is a possibility. Like that can come true. So it's like it's it's just whatever See, we don't know is like why stress out so much about it. There you go. That's the that's the staunch difference in the in the the distinct styles of nihilism I w- we were discussing mm. the the open minded nihilism mm. I don't believe in thing I don't believe in any of this shit but hey if it's proven true I'm there and the staunch nihilism where it's like nah that shit ain't out there yeah maybe that maybe that's the difference is like and being open to the possibility and then being closed mm. off to the potential I can here's the thing even if there's no God and it truly has, there's just a scientific explanation of how the universe came to be. If we're literally just like the fart of a black hole, like if that happens to be true, like it makes earth so much more beautiful. Like we think of earth as like a God's creation. Like it's, it's meant to be perfect. Like, but we like, 
if it wasn't meant to be perfect and we just got so lucky to live on this perfect planet that if we take care of it can provide everything for us you know that that's another problem but like this planet is perfect and it we have just been the luckiest species to get a planet like this like it kind of just makes life like more like oh my gosh like this is all that more precious. precious yeah it's like instead of being like yeah nothing matters i'm a rick i'm just gonna go on and do whatever the fuck i want But no, I've been, uh, and what's funny too is that, uh, The Sopranos is actually, uh, one of those shows that'll get you thinking a lot mm. about this sort of thing. Uh, because there is a lot of that discussion. There's a lot of mystical shit, a lot of spiritual shit. Like, what is the afterlife like? You got Polly who thinks, who got told by a shaman that spirits are following him and stuff. <laughs> like, it's, it, it, and you got AJ sitting in the front seat with his dad and going, why? Why does any of it matter? Nothing matters. Like, and and there's no character that makes you think about this this sort of shit more than Tony Soprano. Yeah, he, he always, uh, like in his therapy sessions and uh, like always, you know, just whenever he rambles, I'm like, this is what's wrong with America today. You know, like, and he just goes into his rants. What happened to the strong silent mm, It's Gary Cooper. This show has surprised me like so much. Like, it's so... I, I don't know. I just I didn't expect it to be like this, and I'm like very pleased that it is like this. That's the thing. The thing that has actually that ho- held me up and holds most people up is that it is several hours of mafia content, and you think you are going to get into several hours of mafia content. Like you're gonna get whackings every episode, and people are gonna get their brains spattered every every episode. And there's certainly that. Mm-hmm. But it's so much far fewer and far in between than you expect, mm-hmm. and that's what mm-hmm. makes it uh, so good. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to finish that show, and I still have so much more to go. I'm only halfway through, right? Or more than a little more than halfway through? A little more than halfway. And you got five, six, and six. Six and six. Six A, six B. Yep. But uh, it's actually really interesting. Uh, I was listening to uh, Talking Sopranos. It's a podcast hosted by uh, Michael Imperioli and Steve Sharippa, who are Chrissy Moltisanti and Bobby Bacala. Oh. Uh, and they, awesome. they do an episodic, uh, episode-by-episode discussion. They bring on guests of all the casts oh. and stuff. Uh, definitely don't listen to that until you finish the show, mm-hmm. uh, because... It's funny listening to them because, like Stephen, like they're as Lenny and George as a duo can get. I feel like, like Stephen Sharippa, just like I don't even know if like the intention was originally spoiler free, because like you can tell early on that Michael Imperioli is like, ah, ah. Mm. like he's like really like <laughs> Stephen Sharippa is just letting it fucking uh. fly. Like, <laughs> he's, like, he's letting all like what how it ends and stuff go and stuff. Uh, and, and, interesting. <laughs> That's glad just to just to if it's relevant to the conversation. But what I was going to say is that uh, they they had a prequel movie episode uh, about many saints in Newark and uh, James Gandolfini's son, uh, Tony Soprano. James Gandolfini is the actor. His son plays young Tony Soprano in the mm. movie, uh, Michael Gandolfini. And uh, hearing him talk about uh, he had he'd never watched The Sopranos. Because he was never old enough for it. He's only 22 now. Mm-hmm. Like, he was never old enough for it, and his dad never let him watch it and stuff. And uh, and obviously, after his dad died in 2013 or whatever, 11 maybe, uh, it was, like, too painful to revisit. Like, why would you even go back? But when he got that role, you know, he had to study That's Tony crazy. Soprano to become Tony Soprano. And uh, so, like, the way he talks about it, he's like... He felt like he's a Sopranos expert, but really only on seasons one through four. Because five and six, according to him, and I won't give you any spoilers, just get a lot darker. Mm. He was like, and and more painful for him to revisit also. But they, they get... I can see. It just gets... It's like, this is the season finale where I've been like, okay... Like, it's about to get real. Like, like 
this is really real. Like really, this really, is the really preamble. real. Like this is the pregame. You know, some real shit has happened, but like. And and I think that would be why six A and six B is a thing. Like uh, it, it 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 truly is. Like it's a finale. That's damn, what the last season. That's is. awesome. Damn, mm, I can't wait to finish that show. Mm. It's it's fantastic. And uh, who would you uh who would you say are like your favorite like favorite dynamic right now? Mm. Well, um, hmm, that's a good question. I like because there's so many good duos on the show. You got like Tony and Chrissy. Uh, I mean Tony and Melfi. I love I love them together. Their scenes together are fantastic. Uh, yeah, yeah. Polly and Sill. Polly and Chrissy. Polly and Sill like, are just like, just oh my god. I don't know. They they always make me laugh. Like like Sill's face. Like just the the Ita- he's just like the most Italian looking guy I've ever seen. I swear to Dude, God. Dude, he's 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 a caricature of of mobsters. Yeah, it's he's fantastic. literally the stereotypical Italian guy you think of. But uh, dude, and even crazier, he was just the uh, guitarist in Bruce Springsteen's band. Wow, and now he's uh, Silvio Doppel. fucking Dante. Wow, that's that's awesome. Uh, let's see who else. I guess uh, finally they're divorced. Sorry for the spoiler, random spoiler out of there. Um, it was kind of. I, I'm see. I'm gonna spend Tuesday cutting the fuck out of this episode mm. so that I can put <laughs> some of it in like a main event and a bunch of it in a Patreon. Mm. It's gonna be. Okay. It's gonna be eloquently done. I got this. Um, shit. the divorce was kind of brought on a little, like a little surprise. Like I knew it would probably happen. Like it just makes sense. No, like, like you watch that show for seasons and you're going yeah, like, like, okay, man, this is not. When healthy. is she finally gonna like make the decision? Like. It was kind of like uh, she already knew what was happening, though, and I guess it was just the fact that it was the nurse that was so close to her or whatever that, like, just was the last straw. But, like, there should have been so many last straws. And, I, I mean, the show goes into it. Like, she had to try to fix it, like, the religious side and everything. Like, Well, and, like, and beyond that, while while, like, objectively – if you are in real life, Tony Soprano is obviously the bad guy in this marriage. He is cheating on her. He, uh, I mean, he murders people. Uh, but they do make a point in the show to question Carm's morality mm. on several occasions. Like, well, hey, there are so many, there are so many points that should have been the last straw that he bought his way out of. Mm. That's true. Yeah, the that, and Carm does mention that. She literally does like oh yeah the like rings, she's like and I then what's the house it's basically just a bigger and, ring like and that's what that's what is so good about that very th- when she does make that decision mm-hmm. because it's like I'm so glad you finally came to this because it's like it's it really is a self actualization and a and a, like a, she's like I'm done that's that I I really I was hoping for her and Furio to run off into Italy together into the sunset like oh. uh, Furio is the fucking guy man he was, he I was love this Furio close to killing Tony though man and pushing him into those propeller blades like and then he's like oh man I love Furio was one of my favorite characters though he I I liked like his storyline like it was int- it was a storyline that I thought I thought he was just going to be the muscle guy you know like Oh, dude, and when they introduce him as the muscle guy, he goes fucking crazy. Like, uh, whenever he, like, bursts into the massage parlor and is, like, shooting, shooting knees and stuff. Yeah, he uh, goes straight to it. Yeah, they do it differently over there in Italy on the other side. Uh, Dude, and I love, I love that scene when Tony's, like, letting the dog loose. He waits in the car and lets Furio do the whole thing, and he's in the car fucking laughing, smoking a cigar, and it's like... God damn, these dudes are evil, mm. huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's uh it's I don't know. It's it's really weird like root for Tony though. Uh like, no, it, like it's, it's just it's, how the show the goes. Same thing with, yeah. It, it's the same with Game of Thrones. Like I would never wish death on a child, but boy oh boy if I wanted Joffrey Baratheon to fucking die. You know what I'm saying? They there's one thing they did well, and that's portray him as the most hateable T V character of Maybe of all time. I've, uh, <laughs> there are, uh, there's one character in The Sopranos who kind of, uh, a couple characters in The Sopranos that kind of give Joffrey Baratheon a run for, uh, his money for me. Okay. Uh, Any of that and, I've been uh, introduced, Libby, introduced to? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Two. Okay. Uh, Livia Soprano. 
uh, Tony's mom mm-hmm. is a special, special kind of evil, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, Ralphie. Ralphie was just uh, like, that was just because it was too real. You know, Joffrey's like a uh, medieval fucking child king. You know, like I can separate myself from that. But like Ralphie, that's a real fucking Yeah, guy. those guys exist <laughs> in the world. Yeah, he sucks. He sucks. The mom was definitely an evil mastermind pulling all the strings before she died, which was interesting. Um, oh, and I, you like, dude, I, you don't know the half of it because, uh, like that actress, Nancy Marchand, who played Livia Soprano actually died in real life, ah. which is why that's so abrupt. That makes sense. And also feels like season three is them kind of floundering. Like here's a bunch of different stories. Hmm, interesting. I never, we'll tie it up. Later. Was she supposed to be a bigger uh, role? Yes. Like, was she supposed and to be originally... pulling all the strings? Like, well, I feel like they were building was... to that. Or, I mean, well, you remember at the beginning of season three when they were like, uh, the the problem was that Livia was in possession of these airline tickets. Yeah. And, like, she was – there was going to be, like, the original plan for the show, according to David Chase, was a four-season show. Uh, And she ultimately would have testified – against Tony Mm. like his own mother would have testified against Tony and then like it would have posed the conundrum for Tony should you kill do I have to kill my own mom so it's one of the it's one of like the greatest what ifs in TV history like how different the Sopranos could have gone Uh, and obviously it's tragic for far far more reasons uh, far for better reasons mm. that it's more tragic with a uh, such a great actress who portrayed the most hateable character of all time so perfectly. I, I, like it was very hard not to hate her. Like bring the cookies, bring the cookies. <laughs> oh, I wish the Lord would take me. <laughs> oh my God, bro. she said that so much. Oh my God, that's not how you talk to your kids, Ma. Oh, just take me already. <laughs> Ah, oh, just take me, Lord. It's all a big nothing. Someone knocks on the door. Um, go away instantly. <laughs> go away. <It's> warm. <laughs> oh, I thought you were the the social lady or whatever. Like you know, like yeah. just oh man, yeah, she was very hateable. That's for sure. But that, there was also a degree of her that come season two, it's almost less hateable and more like not endearing but like you've gotten so used to it that you're kind of like it's funny mm. when she pops back up you know what I'm saying mm. it's kind of like uh, with uh, like the sand people in Star Wars you have to watch the prequel trilogy in order for them to make the jokes about them in the Phantom Menace it's True, because like you can't watch them in the Phantom Menace and be and then be truly afraid of them come a new hope Mm. Like that's just that's just not how that works. Hmm. Yeah, this uh, I'm really I'm interested to see what this show brings because uh, I think what it's leading to, it's what it seems like, is an all out war. Don't I, I'll just close my eyes just for no reaction. Um, no, I got you. I'm 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 pretty stone faced with this shit, mostly because like a ton happens and like there there's a really good chance that I don't remember all the storylines. I yeah like, yeah I feel like uh. Johnny Sack right now. I got my eye on him. Um, he's, uh, you know, he's he really, really wanted him dead. Um, was really pushing for it. Was very, you know, iffy on it too. Not a lot of details. Was very cryptic about the way they talked, whether that was just on the phone or whatever. They have to be. Well, that's that's the whole, the mob but thing. But like, you know, he like, was yeah. extra suspicious about How it. How about our friend? He, yeah. How about our friend over but there? But even when the... they were just talking with themselves, like he was still a little, he was a little suspicious. And he's like, uh, you know, all, saying like how he's l- losing money. He's not coming into money anymore. But then you see him. New York is, New York is a fucking, like they just, they always seemed like a problem. Mm-hmm. They always seem like yeah. a problem. And like – I got my eye on that and, guy. I think he's wanting to take over. That's like what I'm getting from him is that that's what his goal is. Um, so he – because like he wanted to start the war. Um, I think he thought that Tony would lose the war and that he could take over from New York after that. Um, or 
and here's here's a really interesting bit of this is that I don't I still don't entirely understand the structure of the organization uh, at that level because to my understanding yeah to my understanding Tony is a boss but he's not the boss no. yeah no yeah there is one boss I think there's the boss but who, I don't who is think it that's now where you're at um I don't think they mentioned like I don't think they mentioned it like I I, I don't okay. think it's part of the show like it's like okay I just cool think that there's so like the, there's the five families and like there's those families I think there's some in America some in Italy um I don't know how many are in America and how many are in Italy see that's it's all very confusing because yes. it's like the sopranos are like a part of the DeMeo crime family mm-hmm. And the DeMeo crime family, like you don't meet anyone with the last name DeMeo. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh it's very I don't yeah, I don't fully know either. I just know it's the five families. Um and there's a boss of each of those families. Um each of those families usually has a territory, and you know, the territory is New Jersey, New York, Italy, wherever. Um, but then they all report to the boss, and I don't know who that is. Like I it's some I it's I have no idea. Okay, then who's the boss of New York? Uh, mm, I always get them mixed up with Falcone from like Batman, the mob guys. What is his name? Oh, Carmine Carmi- Falcone. It's Carmine is his first name. Is it Lupertazzi? What's his last? Carmine is his first name, but I always forget his last name. Like they call him Carmine. I think. I think they just refer to him as yeah. Carmine. Um, yeah, Carmine, Carmine Lupertazzi. I, I should not be Googling anything in The Sopranos. Yeah, no, I, do I not, almost do yeah, not. Wow, just shouldn't be doing that. I got you here, though. It is, it is Carmine Lupertazzi. Yeah, Carmine. Uh, so he's like, Johnny Sack was, you know, he's talking like, he's healthy as a bull. Uh, you know, look at this guy. Super healthy. Look at him, you know, looking at Tony, like, you know, because they knew they were about to whack this guy. Uh, then they, Dude, Johnny, Johnny Sack. It's just like he's too comfortable. Mm, that is, you know, like that's what it feels that's like. True. It's like he's he's too cool. He called like, off. He, he's and like, called on the hit too many times. Like he said, yeah. call it off, call back on, call it off, and then it's back on. Or no, it was off, then on, then off. That's where I'm at. Um, yeah, but like he's just a little, like I don't know if this is just like uh, maybe I notice this wrong but he's mad at uh at i already forgot his name carmine. carmine he's mad at carmine because of the uh like those apartments that they were building and that was like uh, where all of his money was coming from and that he's no yeah. longer getting any money and that's why he's mad whatever but then you see every clip of him you see after that is him at his house and his house is getting this huge you know addition to it um, and he's just sitting in this super, you know, his new house and he's just getting, you know, like dude is, it seems Living. like he has zero problem with money. Like he's adding stuff. Like there's more things that he's getting. Like, it seems like he's getting more money than he used to is like what it seems. But, uh, gotcha. so that's, that's why, like, I don't have many theories of the show. Like, I don't really think of what's going to happen next. I really just, you yeah. can't, you can't theorize. I really it. just like, let like... the show just go really like and and there's there's a degree of that just because like we can't as uh civilians as they would put it uh truly understand what they're doing like like we can we can have a general perspective and an idea and discuss it and stuff but it's like because of the nature of the show and who these mobsters are inherently they're unpredictable mm-hmm. like they that's that's they're the okay the with show. murdering people that's a very yeah. big difference in in uh, in people. Um, well, and not not just that they're okay with murdering people, but that it like comes with the job. That's true. Yeah, like it's, that. Like yeah. they sign up for a job <laughs> in which that's a part of it. I w- it's uh, I wonder how much of the you know whenever uh, Christopher was getting initiated or whatever, and they had him have like the the card of Mary burn it in their hands prick their finger and then rub it together or whatever in the blood. Like, yeah. I wonder like if it's truly just like, all right, kid, you're in it now. You listen to me, you report to him. You don't say anything else. Like I, I you know, it's probably just like, uh, I don't know. I, I, I 
wouldn't think there's an actual like thing. I guess it, you know what? No, there definitely is because like fraternities still exist and they still initiate people with ceremonies and stuff. And the people in the mob yeah. are just like people in fraternity. Like it's like you got to have something. Yeah, you, you know the secret brotherhood. Sort yeah, it's of just thing. you got to. Like uh, yeah, it, that's a, another weird thing. Like living outside, like finally of like living through a fraternity and then like being out of it and realizing like just how just, uh, like i don't know i just hate the the vibes the culture the, culture, the yeah it's i mean obviously i have some of my best friends i've ever met in my life and they're lifelong friends um but the it's just like within. so many things that are just so annoying about it like and just uh but, but yeah it's hey a lot of my friends are americans true yeah I don't fuck with the way we do things. I just am a human now. That's what I am. Yeah, I feel that. Human. Feel that. Just a human. That's what I'll boil it down to now. Man, and you know what? I think that might be a good place to top off the show. We're all just humans. This was the. Uh, <laughs> we're all just we're all just humans. Uh, this was the hundred and forty first episode of the Penny Bloom podcast. Was I, Colton Robertson? I was joined by Joseph. My fucking George and Joe, you can go and look, but I promise you, you will not see the 140th episode yet. It'll be out on Sunday. Oh, no. I was looking to see if 141 was prime. It's not. Ah, uh, I see. It's divisible by 47. That's random. Three. I mean, three is not a little less random, but like the 47 and yeah, three, that's, that's it. That's all it has. Other than that, it would have been prime. Close to a prime wow. episode. Wow. I'm anyway, sorry. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, if you uh, if you would... Head to patreon.com slash Corobloom where you'll find this entire episode uh, complete without any cuts and breaks. Uh, it was it was kind of all over the place. We didn't have a general idea going in. So, uh, you know, we, we just talked and it was a lot of fun. It was one of the better conversations. And I've noticed as of late, me and Joe have these conversations, as you'll find a, uh, a two hour Patreon exclusive, uh, a couple two hour Patreon exclusives of just us talking about shit. Mm-hmm. Uh and uh so yeah uh go follow on twitter at penny bloom pod follow on instagram at penny bloom podcast again i was colton robertson i was joined by joseph george thank you very much thank you for having me it's always a pleasure being out of course remember peace love and bloom and we're all just humans (laughs) we're all just humans